And it's always best to use odd numbers. A group of three or a group of five is better than a group of four or two or six. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So I've got a sheet of Bockingford here. This is just an A4 or 20 by 30 centimetre sheet. I've also got two cats going mad around me. They're having a jolly good play at the moment. But let's not take too much notice of them. Um, I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to give these Kuretake colours a bit of a workout, this time thinking about leaves and somewhat darker colours. And uh, not necessarily particularly realistic colours, because um, that would be boring if we only ever stuck to realism, wouldn't it? So just need a piece of paper here and so I can just check the colours that I'm using. Um, yeah, when I do things like this, I, I do <clears throat> need inspiration. So it takes quite a while sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, to come up with uh, what I'm going to do. And then you never know how it's going to turn out. So, But what I've got here, I've got my set of Kuretake colours and um, <clears throat> I'm going to paint some leaf shapes, quite generously sized, big-ish in other words. And big so that I'll be able to do some embellishment on them. And uh, just going to see where that, that all takes us. I'm mixing together at the moment black with purple. Um, and uh, it's going to be some nice dark colours, but of course we're going to come in to that with embellishments in lighter colours. And because these Kuretake paints are semi opaque if you don't use much water with them um, that will mean that we'll be able to uh, go over the top of the dark colours with something lighter if we want to. So I'm using a number 11 I think this is round brush yes so now I'm looking for a dark blue this is the benefit of this set um, is that um, it gives you lots of ready mixed colours that you can pick from. Now that's not to say that you can't get these colours. This is indigo to my mind. I don't know what they call it. What do they call it? Blue grey deep. And I've got indigo in my tube sets. But if you don't really know what way you want to go, a set like this is handy. I'm all for the uh, laying out of the ones that you're going to use, but if you don't really know what you're going to use, this is quite a quite a good way to go. So this is fun, and uh, I'm going to sit down now. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some of these. I think. What am I going to do next? I think I might do some circles, actually. It's always best to use um, odd numbers. So a group of three or a group of five is better than a group of four or two or six. It just is more aesthetically pleasing, if you know what I mean. And uh, I think we'll do a splodge down here. And maybe we'll do a, a mauve splodge up here, which will turn into flowers, perhaps. Mm. 
this time of day, the, the animals all wake up and they start getting antsy about where their dinner is. But I don't normally feed them till half past three, but it's half past two and it's like, where's my dinner, mummy? Another thing is that you shouldn't ever do one of a shape. So if I've done one like that down there, then I've got to turn this one into that sort of shape. Otherwise, it just looks silly. And uh, I'm sort of regretting that I've done that shape now. But anyway, we have. So there we are. So we've got a couple of triangles, not triangles, star-shaped things, really. Um, I think I might switch to a slightly smaller brush because I want to do some stems. Just for the sake of the pattern, really. Just join them together. And uh, this one needs to come out here. These ones can be sort of free flowing. And then uh, I think we probably still need some more. Uh, Berries. So we'll go for slightly lighter. Just do some circles because they're quite nice to embellish. <clears throat> now I'm going to try some of these golden thingies down here. I've got the Kurataki starry colours set, um, but I haven't tried these ones out yet. These came with the set of Forty-eight. So we'll just see what happens when we drop that in, shall we? The colour, the starry colours, and this one, these silver and gold metallics, they do take a bit of waking up. You have to give them a, a bit of a beating before they'll start to work. So, but they do work. They look rather good. Whoops. <laughs> oh well. The fun of this is you just you don't know where it's going to go. If you drop this metallic stuff in, it kind of surges outwards. And uh, I'm going to put metallic on the petals because I don't really like what I did here. So we'll have to make a virtue out of a vice. And as they dry, you can come in with some kind of basic embellishment, which we can add to as we go along. I've got a fairly big brush, so. And 
It looks pretty ugly at the moment, but I think it will be okay when it's done. I'm just going to do dots on this one, which I also don't like much. Thing is, when you have done a painting like this, if there's part of it that you don't like, if you're lucky, you will find that you can just cut that bit off. So, you know, you might do a painting that was 10 by 12 inches or something, 8 by 12, 8 by 10, get it right in a minute. Um, and you accidentally did a corner of it that you don't like, just cut it off or hide it behind a, a mat when you put it in a frame. And I've been, I haven't said this yet, in the two years I've been doing this, I don't think I've said it once, but I'm going to say it now because I just suddenly thought of it. When you've done a painting and you're not quite sure whether you like it, find a mat, a mount. You can, you get them free nowadays with frames. Didn't used to, but you do now. And stick the mount around your painting. And then better still, stick it behind a piece of glass um, in a frame and then see what you think, because it's absolutely astonishing how much better a painting looks in a frame. So it's always worth a try. Put the gold down next to wet paint and you get amazing runs and things. Very interesting. And we could do some leaves in gold. Could do some blobs some circles. There's no need for any precision, quite the reverse. I'm all for letting go of precision. Especially, you know, we are, some of us, perhaps not in our first flush. And there's nothing we can do about that, except enjoy it, because there's lots of advantages to getting older. Um, but best thing to do is to accept it and not try to do things you can't do. I just came up to the studio and I'm a bit out of breath because I have a bit of asthma. And <clears throat> I thought to myself, oh, well, just as well that I went up Goat Fell on the Isle of Arran when I was 50 and didn't try and do it as I'm approaching 70 because I would never have made it. It was hard enough then. <laughs> I've never been blessed with the best... Uh, uh, what do you call it, lung capacity, never, uh, even when I was a kid. Everyone else seemed to be able to run for miles, and I couldn't. Couldn't figure out what was wrong. Couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. But, of course, it was asthma. No one told me. I didn't even discover that I was short-sighted till I was about 14. My parents didn't notice. I couldn't see. <laughs> I couldn't recognise people. And people used to wonder why I didn't know who was who and I never said hi to anyone. It's because I couldn't see their faces. <clears throat> I am not joking. I am not telling a lie. Um, okay, so now I think we need some, some of this white. And I'm going to mix it with some lilac. Let's make a nice pale lilac. You see how that one's drying out? Like that needs a bit of a spray of water in it, so because 
We're air conditioned here now and I think everything's getting a bit dry. So like I said, these paints are perfect for both watercolor and gouache. So if you want to paint over the top of things, say for example, you want to put a lighter line in there because you think, oh, that was a mistake. You know, that's the thing, that is the snag with some ways that some people paint watercolor. You can't correct it. It always looks overworked. But gouache is meant to be worked up. It's meant to be um, able to be corrected. And embellished. That one's still wet, I can't really do much with that. And I think we'll do some lighter blobs in places. Go over that, as I said, I don't like it. So we'll put a big light colored circle over so that will recede into the background. We uh, made our first um, sale today of not our first sale ever. We sold many, many products to people in America and a few in England, but today, I live in France at the moment, as you know, and uh, today we sold something to a French lady. She bought a book with a sunflower design on the front of it from our website, and um, she lives just down the road. She, <laughs> amazing, actually lives just down the road in a place called Landonneau, which um, if, she, if she's watching this, she might, um, she might know who I'm talking about. So, bonjour, madame de Londono. There's a, a lovely museum at Londono that um, uh, was set up by the Leclerc family. I think that's right. I think I'm thinking about the right place. Um, Leclerc, they do their supermarket and uh, they have this wonderful um, art museum just down the road from here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry now and then I'm going to come back in with some gold pen or some black pen or something like that and work into the background. Okay, so this is now dry and I think probably it would be probably sensible to just Tape down the corners a little bit so it doesn't curl up quite so badly. The animals have been fed now, so they'll perhaps settle down a bit. Okay, so I've got here my um, gold, silver, white and bronze um, Signo Uniball. Uh, gel pens or whatever kind of ink they've got in them, I don't know, and a 0.05 Stettler pigment liner as well. And I'm just going to come into this with any and all of the above. Um, I need to be able to just try these pens out to make sure they are working. And I think this is another one of those paintings where it's probably a nice idea to sit down somewhere quiet and just slowly do whatever comes to mind. You can put spirals inside these lighter colored 
uh, circles that you've made. You can go around the outsides of some of the circles as well. There's a lot of things you can do. Maybe bronze inside there. And then you could do some, some more bronze ones beside. This is where you can completely do whatever you want, whatever comes to mind. This is where there really literally are no rules whatsoever and it's all up to you to do exactly what you feel like doing. Could put dots in the middle of these ones over here. These have dried with quite nice lighter coloured lines on the outside, so it'd be a shame to lose those, but it's quite fun to go inside to the middle like that. And then we could put a bronze line down the middle of the veins like that. And then we could come round the outside edge. Do squiggles down there like that. Just completely limitless what you can do. Do a little bit with the bronze and then perhaps we'll swap to gold or white. And the other thing I think which is quite nice is to fill in some of the background with this fine pen. So Imagining that these circles are coming out, sort of flowing out. And then we can do um, finer leaves in the background, like that, on these stems. And uh, probably a good idea to put, to put that on. And then on this one, this ugly duckling here, we've got to transform this one. So perhaps we'll come in with the white. and break that outside edge a bit. That's a little bit better. And then perhaps we'll go for the gold. Go for gold. Sun's come out again. We had a bit of rain and the grass has started to grow again, but they're predicting another heat wave next week. I hope that's not going to happen. There we are, that's better. That's much more pretty now. And the other one that I didn't like was this one down this end, and I think I'll probably do something similar with that one. Do kind of, looks like, um, uh, what do you call it? But, um, buttonhole stitch, you know, those of you who are sewers. Much better. 
and it just goes on and the beat goes on the white it's not easy to use the white somebody said the other day that they had managed to buy some of these pens which had Japanese writing on them instead of English and that they worked a lot better than the one that they had had that had English on it. So I don't know how you could um, make sure that you only got the ones with Japanese on, but it's worth looking out for. I don't know, might be worth a try. Um, let me see, what shall we do? We'll put Maybe put some white around these pink dots. And we'll grab the black again and take some of these circles out over here. And where you've got a little bit of space around some of these, you could bring some squirrels out some like that. It's all about making a uh, lively and interesting pattern requires no skill. Let's put some flower shapes in the middle there. I don't know whether this silver one would work well. I haven't really used that very much. I'm not sure, perhaps we'll try it on. Yeah, works on the dark colors. That looks quite good. Put some dots. That's nice. There we are. Maybe we'll put some dots on this one too. You can hear, perhaps in the background, I'm not sure if you will, because the sound reduction, noise reduction on the video is pretty good, but if you can hear it in the background, um, there's a sort of jingle going on. It's one of the cats playing outside, and we just bought them some new collars, and they've got little bells on them, and uh, to try to protect the birds from the cats because you can't have it both ways, can you? We've got five cats and uh, we love them all very much, but the birds aren't so fond of them. The cats like to catch the mice. We don't like to see them being eaten. So the bell will help. Definitely will help the birds.
I don't know if I mentioned that this is Bockingford paper. Bockingford, it's a quite popular brand in England. Um, I think you can buy it in pads from Amazon, as far as I, as far as I know. It's quite good. It's not very expensive, and it's um, it's not a hundred percent cotton, but it's still quite good. I think it's cellulose. You might not like the pen line on the outside. You might prefer to leave that out, but I wanted to try it out and see how it worked. I think the main thing is to just put a little bit all over the whole thing so it looks balanced. Maybe a little bit more over here. I was going to say that this uh, this paper is quite nice for this, and you can colour these little circles that we've done. You can colour them in with the pen. It's not too rough, this paper. <clears throat> This bronze colour is quite nice. It's um, a bit more powerful than the gold. Gold's nice too. Silver is useful as well. I think the thing is with this uh, type of thing, it's best not to think too hard about it, but just to go ahead and do it.
Uh, -dum -dum -dum. Listening to the pigeons outside, they're making quite a lot of noise. Don't know if you can hear those too. Just wondering what's happened to the cockerel. He's shut up. <laughs> He must be asleep. Well, here we go, yeah. getting towards the end, I think. Although, like I've often said, where is the end? When is it done? With something like this, it's hard to say. I'm just going to turn this round. Look at it the other way up for a bit. The way it started, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I noticed that we haven't finished this one down here. I could do some different shapes on that one. And here, too. Now you can get to this point and you might say to yourself, oh, I think I want to bring in some more paint or something. So you could do that. You might, you might want to um, you know, add some more color. Might want to uh, put some paint in the background, for example. You could do that. Is this gold or bronze? No, that's gold. What I want to do on here is put some dots on here in bronze. And you could, I think, possibly Add some lines overlapping, going behind and sort of linking up. Uh, this one looks like it wants to join onto something, but I don't think I can make it join. So that's just going to have to sit there. Right, okie dokie, so I think 
I'm going to call that a day. And uh, have fun with this one. I think you'll enjoy it. <coughs> it's uh, completely up to you exactly what you do. And uh, basically what I did at the beginning was I chose two colours, really. The purple from the Kiritaki colours. This one and this one over here, which is um, called blue-grey. Blue-grey deep. Blue-grey deep. And that's all I used on there, really. Just mixed that up and uh, put it on more or less randomly. Just seeing how it was going to turn out, really. All of these lines, you can you can break them by putting little circles. And it just looks like you've been embroidering things. Put some more dots on this one. I think it might be best that way up. I'm not quite sure. I think so. I think that's probably the best way around for it. And all these floral, little florets that you've done, you can colour them in. There won't be a sketch for this one because I think it's the kind of thing that needs to be completely free flowing. Little V shapes makes a change from circles and spirals. It's definitely worth having a set of these pens, whatever you're going to do with your art. And they're not, not expensive and they last quite a long time. <clears throat> Okay, well, I think that's enough for now. I can't stop every time I say that. I don't stop. I keep finding something else I really want to fill in. <clears throat> but I'm going to let you go now. Do have a go at this one. I know you'll enjoy it and make it your own. There's a few places where I think I want to put some white, but my white wasn't working very well. So let's see if it's working better now. Wouldn't it be fun if nature was like this? Wouldn't it be strange and fun and why shouldn't it be if you looked out the window and all the leaves and things were all um, decorated in, in gold and silver and bronze instead of all being boring old green? I mean, I know the flowers are very um, elaborate and everything, and, but the, where we live, of course, the overwhelming colour that you're surrounded by normally is green. It's only this year when we've had this drought that you suddenly look and you think, oh, yeah, well, I wonder if I could get used to that if the grass was always brown in the summer. Like when we lived in Calgary, I, I was really surprised to find how much, um, how little greenery there was in the summer. Everything went completely brown. Not used to that here. And now we're having the downpours and people are being killed by storms. Right, I am going to stop now. So I'll let you go and I shall see you tomorrow.